This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnson. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 189, baby. Oh yeah. In today's episode, I speak to Dan the Man about firefighters yes that's right the fire brigade firemen firefighters whatever you want to call them um as we thought we would continue from last week's conversation about the police remember all of the rock and roll vocabulary to this episode is on the website rock and roll english.com slash episode 189 some other news my course will be out this week on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I don't know right now because I'm just putting on the finishing touches. But if you are interested in signing up for the course, go to rockandrollenglish.com slash course. And then I will send you an email in the next couple of days to let you know what to do. Anyway, that is enough of me talking. I will talk to you all again at the end. Here is the conversation. Happy listening. Dan the man. How are you today? I'm very good. How are you? Always fantastic, Dan. Always fantastic. Even more fantastic that I am now off work thanks to the coronavirus. (laughs) How many days have you got off? Uh, So let me just think. Thursday, maybe even... I can't... You know what? This is the problem. When you have a few days off, I can't even remember what day of the week it is now. I think it's 2013, so... (laughs) Oh, I feel your pain. But anyway, it will be like four days in total. So always fantastic in answer to your original question. Um, Anyway, how do we usually start the show, Dan? With a review. And do you think we have a review? I would say yes, but from your tone, I think it's no. <laughs> wow, that's intelligent. That's You are learning, okay? Only nearly 200 episodes in. Um, notice how I said 200 episodes in, like into the podcast, and you have finally learnt. Um, mm-hmm. No, I, I don't think we do, but I had the feeling that there is a review, but now I just can't find it because sometimes people do send them to me and then... I just lose them, I think. Um, So I'm obviously very well organised there. Um, So yes, if you have sent me a review and I've not read it, please send me it again and just say, Martin, you're an idiot. Okay, and that's fine. So people, in a way, have to leave two reviews. (laughs) No, only one review. They just need possibly to send it to me two times. The the second message is a review of you. (laughs) That's fine. Um, Anyway, do you know what we're talking about today? I'm going to guess the coronavirus. Well, you have guessed wrong because I'm so fed up of hearing about it. So when you're fed up, you're so bored of something that I don't want to talk about it. So we are not talking about that. We are actually talking about firefighters. Okay, as last week we spoke about the police, I thought we can continue the conversation Mm. about the forces. I think they're known, aren't they? Are they? (laughs) I'm sure they are. The forces, I think so. Um, Anyone that you can call 999 and then you get through to them. So in England, you dial 999 and then they say, do you want the police, uh, fire engine or ambulance? And then they put you through. Notice that phrase of it, put you through. So you go through. I'll tell you what would have been a good episode if we had gone through 999 calls because they're very funny. (laughs) That is um, a very good idea. And I do need ideas for episodes. So maybe we will do that soon. So thank you very much. So yes, we are talking about firefighters. um, And like usual, I've got a few facts. And I think the first fact we can all agree on is that firefighters are real men. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, can you imagine just going out and, you know speaking to a girl and they say what do you do and you say i'm a firefighter i mean the next question may as well just be do you want to have sex now or later what do you want for breakfast (laughs) exactly i remember being out in chelmsford once years ago when i was about i don't know 18 19 and outside one of uh, the main square where the bars were 
a fire engine had just pulled up. You know what they're doing. Okay, they just pulled up, the doors are open, and girls were just climbing all over them and the and the and the van. Um notice he said there the uh, fire engine pulled up, so basically just arrived and parked. Well I'm sure that was the same as you, Dan, because when you were living in Chelmsford, what was your job title? An IT technician or something like that? Uh well, I, when people would ask, I would just have to say IT because, uh, I, but just because no one wants to hear when you go into details, and then you just see their face glaze over as you tell them. Uh, so when your face glazes over, it's like just the boredom on their face. Yeah, I mean, if you say to someone, "What do you do?" and they say, "I work in IT," I yeah. mean, it's just like let's just end the conversation there. I used to lie at the end of it. <laughs> Tell people you were a firefighter. <laughs> no, I told them I robbed banks just because, you know, I, I couldn't deal with telling people I worked in IT. <laughs> I mean, I had the same when I worked in a bank. If someone said to me, what's your job? I honestly would just go, oh. <laughs> I work in a bank. And then pretty soon they would just walk away and stop talking to me. Um, so, I mean, this is kind of connected to the previous point, but a firefighter, apparently, when they have all of their gear on, so when I say their gear, I mean the uniform and all of that, it weighs up to 30 kilograms. So Can you imagine a, that? That's as heavy as you, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's, that's what I was thinking. I'm lifting my three kilograms in the gym. If I had 30 on me, I wouldn't be able to stand up. Did you ever consider going into the being a firefighter? Absolutely not. Why would I ever even think about that? I mean, like dealing with fires, I couldn't think of anything worse. And as we know, I'm not a real man. In fact, just the other day I was coming home. I'd parked the car and I was just literally walking in my front door. And then my neighbour saw me downstairs and said, oh, I've got a problem with my car. Can you look at it? <laughs> and I said to her... Uh, well, I don't know anything about cars. And she said, no, no, please, please. So she opened up the bonnet. So the bonnet is the bit of the front of the car. Are you serious? Yeah, totally serious. And then we're looking at the engine of the car. <laughs> and I just said, I've got absolutely no idea about this. And she said, no, look, there's smoke and stuff. And I said, yeah, I can see that. What the fuck do you want me to do about it? I would have loved it if you'd taken one look at it and said, okay, Bring bring me my tools. <laughs> and you start bashing around. Honestly. Have have you got have you got tools? I do have a toolbox. Um Mrs. Rock and Roll English um her her dad bought me the toolbox. Um I can't even carry it. It's too heavy. <laughs> I, I thought you said you got I thought you were gonna say you can't even open it. It's also quite difficult to open, I must admit. The only person that uses it is him when he comes round. So I think he bought it for himself, just so he didn't have to bring tools here every time. It's a good strategy. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, so this next one is just absolute madness. Apparently from 1603 to 1867, very precise, I don't know why, um, Japanese firefighters fought fires in a different kind of way. Um, so they used to wet themselves before going in the f into the fire so they were less flammable. Yeah, but surely within five seconds <laughs> you're going to be flammable again. Yeah, well, I'm not 100% sure if this means wet themselves like piss themselves or just put a bit of water on you because if it's piss yourself, honestly, could you imagine there's a fire? It's already a hard job, isn't it? Well, yeah, exactly. And if there's a fire, you have the pressure then of doing the piss. So, like, mm. you're standing there, you're looking at a fire, and then your manager says, come on, boys, this is it. Let's piss ourselves. I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't understand people who can't piss in front of people. That makes no sense to me. You you can't do it. I know you can't. I. <laughs> it depends how much I need to go. If I need to go and do a piss, I can piss in front of people. But... I can't just like, just not like this. You told me when you worked in a bank, you had a <laughs> awkward situation trying to piss in front of your boss. Um, yeah, I think I have mentioned this before on the podcast. It was in the urinals. So when you're pissing 
basically next to someone. That was because I was new to the bank and my manager was there and had his penis very near my penis and I was very uncomfortable. So I did in that situation get stage fright. So when you get stage fright, it's like before you go on stage to play music or something, maybe you get a bit nervous and you can't do it. So yeah, I did um, get nervous and couldn't piss and pushed so hard that I ended up farting, um, which was uh, extremely embarrassing. But yeah, normally I can piss in front of people, but sometimes, you know, not just at the drop of a hat. So at the drop of the hat, it means just like, okay, now piss. That's difficult. Yeah, of course, you don't need to go. But Going into a toilet to piss and then not being able to piss is a strange phenomenon. That happened to me once, okay? I was intimidated by my manager's penis, okay? (laughs) Not because it was very big. I didn't look. Um, Just the fact that his penis was near mine. Sounds like you did look. I did not look. Um, Speaking of pissing, though, um, brings me on to the next point. This is just a question that I asked myself. um, Is when they're at work and the fire's there and they're fighting the fire what if you need to do a shit what do you do then that just wouldn't happen i'm sure it wouldn't (laughs) well i mean i just use this from my experience because sometimes i'm in a lesson and i really really need to do a shit and then it's just such a nightmare you're just looking at that clock and thinking only sort of 25 more minutes please please don't compare you teaching in a classroom (laughs) to firefighters fighting a fire okay i think there's a slight difference in adrenaline all right so uh, you know another high adrenaline situation um have you ever stopped having sex have a shit put it that way (laughs) Um, I can't say I have actually. Can you imagine that? Let's just stop for one one minute. I'm just going to go and do a shit. But I don't think you understand, Dan. You've never taught a class, okay? It's also a very high adrenaline situation thing, and very similar to firefighting, mm-hmm. okay? Of course. Um, so another thing that firefighters often do um, is rescue animals. That's the classic thing um, that people say in England that firefighters all day they just go and get a cat from a tree Mm, yeah and well you would struggle with this wouldn't you oh that would be the worst part of the job (laughs) yeah not shitting yourself or pissing yourself (laughs) it's getting cats from a tree yeah i think i would prefer to put a fire out so notice there i said put a fire out the phrase verb to stop a fire um, than save a cat or save a dog or anything like that that would be an absolute nightmare hmm yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Is that, does that actually happen? Do they actually do that? I mean, you you always see that in a film. Um, I think it actually does. And apparently they also need to respond to every call, even if they are like prank calls. So a prank call is basically not a serious call um, because often children um, call and all of these stupid things. I remember once I did this, um, again, I think I mentioned this on a podcast before, when I called the police, the fire engine, actually the fire brigade, sorry, to tell them I was going to set the dance floor on fire. But um, What? I've never heard this story. Yeah, yeah, when I was at university. So you weren't um, a kid, one, you are a man. Not one of my finer moments okay notice that um term there not one of my finer moments not something i'm particularly proud of but at least nobody came which is good i thought you said they respond to every call um yeah but they obviously i i think in that situation probably knew so we really thought if it is a fire let him burn (laughs) and you know what that would have been fine they were right um apparently fire um fighters it's difficult to think of their name sometimes, Um, are not allowed moustaches or any facial hair um, because of the the masks they have on and stuff like this. So I immediately thought, (laughs) it's the job for you, Dan. Leave leave freelance human being because there is a job perfect for you with no facial hair where you're not even allowed facial hair. Listen, it's it's growing, okay? (laughs) It's coming along. Um, so then if someone ever said to you you know why have you not got a beard you you never have a beard you've never been able to have a beard you could just say hey I'm a firefighter okay I'm not allowed one good point maybe that's what I will say 
But um, then I think by the time I pass training, I'll probably have some sort of bum fluff, hopefully. And then, <laughs> um, so bum fluff is the name that we give um, if you've got like a beard, like a sort of fourteen-year-old, basically, like fluff of your bum. Um, I, for the same reason, though, don't think I could be a firefighter because apparently sometimes as well, they work shifts. So shifts are like the time that they work sometimes for more than 24 hours in some places. And so if that was me, let's say I have a shave before I go to work. After 24 hours, I will have a full beard. Does it really grow that quick? Not that quickly, obviously, but does it go quick? Is it really that quick? If you shave in the morning, will you see it by the evening? Um, maybe the next day you you will definitely see something. Yeah, if I have shave, if I have a shave on Monday, on Tuesday there will be something there. A very small difference, but I, I don't think, think I would have a full beard. I think you'd be fine. You should apply, mate. I don't honestly don't let that hold you back. All right. <laughs> okay, nice rock and roll vocabulary as well. Don't let it hold you back. Don't let it stop you. Um, in Chile, apparently, all firefighters are volunteers, every single one of them. And not only that, they have to pay to basically do this job to be a volunteer. They have to pay. So can you imagine that? You're going in, burning buildings, putting your life at risk mm-hmm. and paying for the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they have to pay? Yeah, I don't know. I- as usual, I didn't do that much research, but yeah, that's just totally mental. Do you know there's a fire, uh, um, I don't know if it's an apartment or whatever it is, but I think it's near, in Cal- it's probably all around the world, but there's, I know there's one in California where they jump from planes into like, uh, where when forests are on fire, they parachute down and then they start fighting the fire. Um, oh my, I mean, that, that is a real man, isn't it? If someone said to me, look, You've got to jump out of a plane. Even that, I don't even like flying, to be honest. So <laughs> Getting in the plane is going to yeah, be a problem. <laughs> exactly. Even if they said, do you want to come and watch? I would say no. Uh, so that's <laughs> the first thing. And then the second thing, you've got to jump out of the plane. No, thank you. I, I would just rather stay here. And then when you do that, after all that, then you've got to fight a fire. <laughs> I mean, fucking hell. How much would you have to be paid to at least just do that for a few weeks? There, there is no amount of money. A billion pound. Well, no, because I, I'm sure I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure I would die. One hundred percent sure. So it's basically saying, do you want a million pound to die? It's the same question. But Mrs. Rock and Roll English will be left financially secure. So, oh right, well that's think fantastic. about it. Think about maybe it. then she can find a new husband and have a great life with the million pounds that I gave a, her. A real firefighter. <laughs> exactly. That's what will probably happen. She'll probably meet a firefighter that day get the million pound and then that will be it good night yeah. um but speaking of america um apparently um 100 firefighters per year are arrested in america for setting fires so when you set a fire it's when you start a fire and that really got me a bit confused because i am not 100 percent sure they understand what their job is uh are they worried about cuts and they're thinking, shit, if there's not enough fires, they're going to cut back on the department? You know what? I think you may have found the solution. That that could be the reason. Um, mm. Yeah, because I was left scratching my head there. So when you're left scratching your head, it's when you're a bit confused. Um, but yeah, if you're a firefighter and you're starting fires, I mean, that's not good, is it? That's not great. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, finally, someone said it. <laughs> So another one I have here is that firefighters apparently need to get dressed in less than two minutes um, when there's a fire. Mm -hmm. Um, And my immediate reaction was, why are they not dressed? Well, they've got clothes on, haven't they? I mean, it's not, they're not naked. (laughs) Well, yeah. So why do they need to get dressed in two minutes then? But what if they want to go having a shit and they don't want to be shitting in their helmet and their (laughs) fire overalls? You know, you want to relax. Hey, if you're a firefighter, you need to be ready 24-7, okay, yeah. on duty. So even if you do the shit, do a shit with a helmet. You could push really hard and faint and hit your head on the floor so your helmet could help you. That's a good point. But two minutes isn't long, though, is it? I mean, how long does it take you to get dressed? It can't take me more than two minutes. 
Um, yeah, but I also think you're not putting on clothes that weigh 30 kilograms. <laughs> okay, so you want them to wear the clothes of 30 kilograms all day? Well, if they're at work, why not? Good point. Yeah, exactly. Hey, eh? Do you know anyone who's a firefighter? Um, I don't know anyone, any of my friends, because none of my friends are manly enough to be a firefighter. But I remember once being at a party and there was a guy there who was a firefighter and I would say his arms, the muscles in his arms, well, his arm was about as wide as my whole body of just pure muscle. (laughs) And he was wearing one of those T-shirts where... Showed it off. Yeah, exactly. So showed it off, like demonstrated it to everyone. Yeah, I just spent the whole night looking at his arms. I mean, I wanted to have sex with him, so, you know. (laughs) You could be sure someone had sex with him. Oh, yeah. If it wasn't you. (laughs) I can guarantee you it wasn't me, but um, but yeah, as I said, what a man, what a man. Yeah, yeah, good point. What a real man. Anyway, we have come to the end of our chat about firefighters. Um, Maybe next time we speak, I'll be a firefighter. Let's watch this space. (laughs) Hey, it's the career for you. Watch this Mm. space. Nice vocabulary. Stay tuned. Anyway, thanks a lot for your time, Dan the Man. I'm sure we will see you again very soon. Yep, speak to you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Dan the Man and me speaking about the fire brigade, the firemen, firefighters, whatever you want to call them. One thing to mention straight away is that at the beginning of the episode, I said to continue speaking about the forces. And then we didn't know if that was the correct term. I can tell you it's not. (laughs) The forces are like the police, the army and people that have force, really, which does make sense, doesn't it? So it just proves I'm an idiot. Anyway, the rest of the vocabulary was correct. So let's have a look at that. I said, we are nearly 200 episodes in. So into the podcast, I mean, it's a nice little term that. Um, I also said, I'm so fed up of hearing about the coronavirus. So fed up of means basically bored of. Um, Then I said, when you call 999, they put you through to the people you want to talk to. Um, A nice term to say they connect you to the people you want to talk to. Dan the man then said when he used to tell people about his jobs, he would see their face glaze over. So that means their face would just basically tell him, oh, my God, you are boring. Then we were speaking about firefighters. And I said they put all of their gear on. So all of their gear, their helmet, the boots, clothes, jacket, all of that. We can call that their gear. Um, And then I mentioned how my neighbour showed me her car and she opened up the bonnet. So the bonnet is the part of the front of the car. um, And under the bonnet, you will find the engine. I don't know anything about it, but I know what the bonnet is then we spoke about urinals so they're the name or that's the name of the toilets for men let's say the ones coming from the wall that you pissing and then we said um well i said that i would prefer to put a fire out so that's the term for like switch off a fire because switch off a fire doesn't exist um we put a fire out or put out a fire we also spoke about prank calls So a prank call, maybe you phone your friend and then he or she answers and then you just say, dickhead, and then you close the call. That is a prank call. Um, Then I mentioned when I um, phoned the fire brigade and told them I was setting a dance floor on fire. It was not one of my finer moments, so not something I'm particularly proud of. We all have them. Um, And then Dan the Man spoke about the bum fluff he would have on his face. So think of fluff um, that comes in various places and then that kind of fluff on your bum, you know, where you've got that kind of strange hair. Imagine that on your face. That's what generally 14-year-olds have, but also Dan the man who's 35. We said firefighters work shift. So shift is from six till two, maybe two till eight, eight till six those are shifts 
Um, we also had the term, don't let it hold you back. Don't let it stop you. OK, um, then we spoke about firefighters setting fire. So if you set a fire, you start a fire. And I said I was left scratching my head at this one. So there's a nice term, basically a more colourful way to say I was confused. Then we spoke about the fireman that I met that time. And I said he had one of those T-shirts on to show off his muscles. So to let everybody see them. Then we said, Dan, the man might become a fireman. So he said, watch this space. OK, something is going to happen. Stay tuned. Very much like you should stay tuned this week because there will be another podcast later in the week when I tell you about my online course. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember, the vocab is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com slash episode 189. I will see you all again next week, definitely and probably in a few days. But in the meantime, just keep on rocking, baby. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.